The Royals and Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Kansas City are teaming up to shut out the stigma of behavioral health. And we're here to talk about that with former Royals catcher John Buck. It's so great to see him back in Kansas City. And John, let's dive back in, dive right into this. Uh, you've had suicide in your family, more than one family member. Um, let's talk about that first and just how you dealt with that at the time and, and what you've learned about it since then because you really have been intentional about learning about mental health. Well, I think I had to because one, you, you lose your brother. It triggers emotion and feelings like you saying it. Even though I've talked about it a bunch, it, it, it emotionally moves you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what could I have done for him? What should I have done for him? What could he have had? What resources could I have made better for him? You, you go down that way. You always, you, you do. Uh, and so I had this strong passion, like I'm going to help as many people, take my experiences and lean into them. And then later on off doing that, it paid off in my own because I had a, a brain injury, you know, started my understanding about it, foul balls, had my own mental, mental health issues pop up and I was, I was more apt to lean into it. So I was able to finish out my career, go to the Mets, almost make another all-star team, get on some playoff teams actually lose to the Royals, <laughs> so which was <laughs> in a weird way kind of fun to lose. I had to see all my boys like, go on and, and I was kind of in the role I was at. It was a li little easier to accept since the Royals sent us off and then later going on World Series. But those, those things impacted me and made me not only a better brother and husband, father, catcher, person, leader, it is because I think I leaned into, which I think there used to be a stigma of I'm not looking at that shrink. I'm not going to talk to that guy. I'm not going to. Especially when you're a professional athlete. Yeah, because yeah. you're supposed to have it all together. And also, you have arbitration year coming up. I don't want Dayton to hear this. I don't want him to know that his catcher's gotten a little anxiety thing going on with about <coughs> throwing ball back to the pitcher, whatever, how it manifested in me. And, and I'm a little different to where I think a lot of people like try to cover it up, which I did for a little bit. And then I just started like, some things aren't feeling right. I'm feeling the way my brother, and my mom were describing to me. So I said, red flags, lean into this and to where I was able to get a control of it and uh, ultimately be able to use it as a positive, you know, and instead of shying away from it saying like, does anybody else realize that I'm pump faking back to the picture here, right? And so, and it's hard to, to lean into that and to see what my brother and the stuff he went on to, it gave me the courage to lean into that and I mean, that's just a throwing thing. And then to realize the struggles that people that have real mental health issues, you know, the military, police, the things that they deal with, that's turned up. We're talking about an at-bat or throwing a ball to me. Turn that to feel that a little bit. It helps you respect and, and want to pay attention. And, and the thing is, is the professional hat that I know that's in the clubhouse now, it can make a huge difference in players. I think it's starting to see the difference in players and, and show the impact. and players are starting to lean into it. And I think I think between me and you, when we've talked, it's let's get this message out to kids. Right. More than ever, I live in Utah, it's sixth or seventh. We teeter back and forth in suicide. Mm. Mental health is terrible in a lot of states. And uh, if we can use it through baseball, that platform to show like, let's talk about these things. If you feel this way, that one conversation right. can spark in the right direction. So. Knowing that and, and knowing those things, how they changed on me, it's just like, let's just, let's do this. Yeah. Let's start this. And so started a podcast during COVID about that, pulled behind the dish just to talk about mental health things and kind of dive down those issues. Well, I know from my experience, you know, one of the things that we like to talk about now with mental health is that you're not alone and there are resources. And the worst part about going through the, the the depths of depression, I've always said, is just feeling like you're alone. Nobody's gonna understand what you're going through. Nobody's gonna care about what you're going through because who wouldn't wanna be John Buck? You know, yeah. Who wouldn't wanna be a broadcaster for the Royals? But I think for me, a big step forward for me, which you probably don't realize this, but one of my worst nights that I ever had was at dinner with you mm -hmm. and Mike Sweeney at a restaurant in New York City we went out with your agents for dinner one night. Yeah. And I had a major panic attack, which I was trying to hide from you guys the whole night. I went to the bathroom three times to splash water on my face just because I thought I was going to die. 
and then John Buck and Mike Sweeney are going to have to go to Yankee Stadium the next day and explain why Ryan Lefevre died at the restaurant in, in New York City. I mean, I was, it was a crazy night. But that night I realized, you know what? Maybe this is a medical condition. Yeah. Maybe this isn't just a matter of my, my will or my strength or am I man enough. And that was really the beginning of the recovery for me when I thought, you know, maybe there's something here that I can't control. Yeah, and I think that's what, seeing my brother and my mom go through that and being able to recognize it and then it kind of manifests in my, those are panic attacks. Yeah. <coughs> Throw back the picture and then be in a movie theater on an off day with Brooke and then be like, <coughs> am, I, am I dying right now? Yeah. And then, oh, okay, let's go play a game. Because all the while, you know, dealing with that, kids were in the NIC unit here in Kansas City. They're learning how to do these things. And like you said, you just like sit down over there, go on the bench, panic attack, you yeah. know? Yeah. And then once it got to the point where it was affecting my job, I leaned into it. And then it was like, oh, there's answers here. I wish I would have done this a long time ago. Right. So, um, but I, I think it took going through those experiences with my mom and my brother and, and, my feeling is it's just, like you said, it's that getting that help where it's so available now and so helpful. I just don't think pe people are scared. Because like what you said, it's, what is John, like, why is John having a panic attack? He's right. in the show, he's got, I would say, a hot wife, three kids, <laughs> right? He's got <laughs> everything a ball player wants. But it's, it's, it's like when you're going through that grind, you're, I think because I'm so good at in the moment, which you are, your skill, it's, not necessarily a good thing because my brain will right. do the same thing. And right. and once I became aware of it, that mental condition, I feel like I've, I wouldn't say it's a strength, I, I'm aware of it. So I, I, right. I, my lifestyle, my thought process in each arena of my life, I gotta keep them clean, you know, from fitness to diet to things. And I, people would say, oh, it's an advantage. I don't know. I'll trade it in to be relaxed like Billy Butler, carry free right. and hit doubles, <laughs> <laughs> not have to wake up and run a mile to to operate, you know. So, uh, but le being able to acknowledge it and get the help you need to say, all right, this is what I am. I'm, I love it, and then get the tools. It's so empowering for anybody. So that's why I, I like to encourage it because you're seeing a half a person. Like when you were doing that, you were probably doing half. You weren't in the zone, right? Right. You were in a flow. You were you were fouling off your pitches on, and even I was I was somehow calling the game and thinking about Correct. what was going on in my life at the same time, yeah. and it was like I could not do my job 100 percent because there was this other voice talking to me the whole time, reminding me about how miserable I was. Yeah, yeah. and and when I when I and when you realize how common it is, once you get help, then you start having these conversations of like not slouches in the games. These are names that people see all the time. Right. And you have these private conversations. You're like, huh, that dude, one of the greatest in the game, is feeling how I'm yeah. feeling? Then it was like, okay, this is how he managed it. This is how he goes about it. And that was like, I felt like, huh, I had hope, you know? Let's, I want to ask you about one last thing. In spring training of 06, Zach Greinke, on the surface, is on the top of the world. He's a young guy. He's a talented young pitcher. Uh, he left the team yeah. for personal reasons. And he didn't say, you know, that his elbow hurt. I mean, because when you played, guys would go on the disabled list and we would say it was a shoulder, oh, but yeah. they were having personal issues because we just didn't talk about those yeah. things. To his credit, Zach That's how left. faux pas was, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, but to hit Zach's credit, he might have been the first one. He left and it was very clear. Social anxiety disorder and depression. I mean, he just, of all people, <laughs> Zach Grinke with all of his quirks, just laid it all out there. And slowly but surely, guys would go on the disabled list because of anxiety or because right. of depression. Like it was okay now to dip your toe in the water. And I'm just wondering like, wh what change did you see in the clubhouse with teammates from that point forward? Well, I think some of it was Zach's just weird and quirky. <laughs> Oh, it's just Zach being Zach, which right. is easy to write up. And it's right? true. <laughs> which is true, and that's why we all love him. But uh, I think, too, is this is what makes him – he he does so many things fearless. Like, for him as a man to just go out there – and we're young. He's like, John, I'm just going to do this spring – the next two games with just my change up. I'm just like, what? I'm like, we're, we're like 18 combined between of us. Let's not try to – 
try to do anything. Well, how about we try to go get people out? Do you mind doing that for right. me, Zach? But he right. was able to try and lean into things that were scary, you know? And I think he, that's just who he is. And I think once he started feeling that and some of the things that he shared with me on that day that are, not the, they're private and probably some of the stuff he was having, it was just, it was him dealing with it and not trying to avoid it. And I think that's probably why he's, he didn't run from it. He's, he faced it and dealt with it, is well aware of it, and he's able to tackle that. And like I said, it's not a, it's not a plus, but he's able to have control of it so that the other arena of his life, pitching, father, being a, the best brother he can be, the best son, those other arenas of your life are, are under control with limited thoughts, the thoughts we want, not what we don't want, you know, that spiral. And, because you can deal with that massive fear and to yeah. be able to clear your thought process in your other arenas, you know, it's like taking the handcuffs off. Right, <laughs> right. Well, and hopefully, you know, like you, he can use that story to help other people because I mean, that's like the best thing we can do is take our story and just, and share it with other people so that they don't feel alone. Yeah, and I think Zach has always been the, and you see him interact with the media or things that you, are kind of quirky, he almost kind of like, he's struggling through that just because He's just looking and some of the comments and things he's gotten comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think people realize how hard that is for somebody with that that type of like you said, mental illness or disease or whatever. Like like he can't control it and if to him looking in eye and that how he does it now and kinda of get some off some of the one liners and things he does. Right. It's come a long way. Yeah. And it's because he's leaned into it and I know that it's given more comfort and freedom and like who cares about the field? It wasn't about the field when Zach and I took off for the golf course that day to decide if he wanted to play again or what he wanted to do. It was, it was he was leaning into becoming a man. I think it's kind of defined who he is sure. in a very good way, even though it's hard, as hard as it is. Um, and I think that's also the good thing about getting help is like there's so much more of you. You're more than a baseball player. Yeah. You're more than a mom. You're more than whatever arena you're in. You just got to un unleash, unhandcuff your other arenas so you can be limited thoughts. It's about thoughts, right? Yeah. The thought game of what you want, not what you don't want. Yeah. John Buck, thanks for sharing your story, buddy. And if you'd like more information on these resources for yourself or someone you care about, visit shutoutthestigma.com.